that the most out of school youth surpassed only by Pakistan and Nigeria. As a priority, the bold and innovative ideas we come up with will create jobs for those out of school youth now. Investing in quality education at all levels, but especially at the lower level, is a priority. It is key to invest in primary health care to protect the rural population, which still is around 80%. While the focus is on tertiary care in cities, unless we focus on primary health care, the health budget will not be able to deal with both communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases which go hand in hand with urbanization and development. A hybrid solution of urban and rural areas with a focus <coughs> on reaching people in remote and marginalized regions of the country will be critical to move ahead an environment which fosters public-private partnership and multi-sectoral collaboration becomes critical at this stage. I'm not a politician. I actually don't like them. Unfortunately, we need them. It is in the interest of everyone to influence the many political parties to run on a development platform to ensure this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity does not pass us. If not, we will have uneducated, unemployed, and unhappy young people who will be used for the wrong purposes other than nation, nation building. This cannot be realized unless all politicians agree that Ethiopia will have an open investment policy for the next 10 years, a critical 10 years, which will guarantee the protection of all investments to scale up education, health and creation of jobs for the youth. As I conclude, I wanted to focus on a multi-generational plan as a conversation platform to see what, we can, what can be done in the 10 challenge areas. This, as you can see, is incomplete on purpose. It's just an example. We start with recognizing the law base we are starting from. 2020 is a critical year to start accelerating the transition to realize the benefits of the demographic dividend. If we spend the next five years in getting the basics right, investing in quality education, health, and good governance, we can make good use of the workforce, which will be 60 percent by 2025. This will ensure and speed up the transition to the demographic dividend. We should use technology wherever possible, especially if this will allow us to accelerate the process. I'm certain there are excellent and innovative ideas in all these areas that will be presented here. What we need to figure out now and what is difficult and what will make a difference from other conferences is to come up with a plan that will survive political change. Finally, a legitimate question will be, where is the resource going to come from to bring these ideas to scale? I'll mention only three. The first one is, stop stealing. <laughs> According to the World Bank, Sub-Saharan Africa loses $50 billion per year in illicit financial flows, $90 billion in money laundering, $20 to $49 billion in corruption, theft and bribery. The amount of resources stolen from Sub-Saharan Africa is more than all the aid that comes to the continent. Between 2003 20, 20, uh, and 2012, the average annual illicit outflows from Sub-Saharan Africa was 5.5% of its GDP. Ethiopia lost anywhere between 1,259 to 3,153 million dollars every year between 2005 and 2014. This means 11 to 29 percent of total trade, 40 to 97 percent of total aid flows, 10 to 30 percent of government total revenue. In 2010. Ethiopia got overseas development assistance of $4 billion, but illicit financial flow at the, the same year was $5.6 billion. 
have tattoos at every single level. This brings me back to good governance. In a country where there is no rule of law, transparency, accountability, efficiency, effectiveness, and equity, the limited resources would have to be misused. Second, increasing the ta tax base and collecting tax efficiently. The difference between a developed and a developing country is the tax base. While developed countries get 20 to 30 percent of their revenue from tax, developing countries get only 10 to 14 percent. In Ethiopia, the tax base is low. It's one of the lowest in sub-Saharan Africa. The system is archaic, and it's also a source of corruption. Improving the tax system and employing more youth will improve the tax base. Third, appropriate policies for foreign investment, both as a guarantee to investors and also protecting the income that the country gets from investment, including OBA. Just by eliminating illicit financial flows, in other words, stealing, Ethiopia will be able to finance the Sustainable Development Goals and the plan that we can come up with. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, with the brain power in this room alone, it will not be difficult to come up with bold and innovative ideas in the 10 challenge areas to get to 2050. What's difficult is nothing can be done in the absence of good government. Will it be too naive in my part to demand these political parties run on a development rather than ethnic platform? As concerned technocrats, <laughs> as concerned technocrats, our job will be to bring these facts both to the public and the parties, as we come up with bold and innovative ideas in these two days. Let's keep this in mind. My bold idea, a non-negotiable agreement, whoever comes to power will create an environment of good governance where all investments, especially for education and health, will be protected for the next 10 years, a critical transition period to reap the benefits of the demographic development. Let's deliver <coughs> on this in the next two days. As we move into these two days of deliberations, let's remember the power we have to bring change. More importantly, as President Roosevelt once said, we cannot always build the future of our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. In our case, Ethiopia's future depends on it, and we are in a position to do something. I thank you.